As temperatures drop across the Northern Hemisphere, airsofters hang up their gas blowback replicas for the winter, awaiting the return of spring, and with it, the warm weather needed for gas guns to function. Well, that's if they don't know how to winterize their equipment. Welcome to Explosive Enterprises, and today we're going to show you how to keep using your gas blowback airsoft guns year-round. First things first, ideally you want to start with a gun that has or can achieve good gas efficiency to begin with. If a gun can do 2-3 to three mags worth of BBs from one fill, it'll be much easier to make it clear a mag at freezing than something that barely manages one mag at room temperature to begin with. However, many gas airsoft guns that are efficient at room temperature will still struggle or not work at all in the cold. The reason is because the amount of pressure produced by green gas or propane varies heavily with temperature, and since most guns are designed to work around room temperature, they may not function properly with lower pressure. If you've ever noticed that Tokyo Marui guns actually handle cold well, that's because they're already optimized to function at the low pressure produced by duster gas at room temperature. For other brands, there are a few things we can tweak to improve performance. The first is air seal quality. Poor seals will cause leaks regardless of input pressure, but this has a major impact at low pressure. The biggest culprit is usually the blowback system in the carrier or slide. The nozzle should not be tight in its track, but if the apertures on the front and underside are plugged, there should be noticeable resistance when pushing it into the carrier or slide. If not, the seal may need to be replaced. We've noticed in particular that ported piston heads with o-rings tend to seal poorly at low pressure, while cup seals or just plain o-rings do better. Note as well that while a cup seal may not appear to seal well in this test, they typically do better in actual use. As well, if the system uses a sealed plug to retain the nozzle spring, be sure to check the o-rings there and make sure it's appropriately sealed. Missing or damaged o-rings in this area will substantially compromise performance. On the magazine, verify that the gas router is intact and doesn't have any nicks or gouges. A handy trick to test whether the magazine is properly sealing against the nozzle is to press the magazine release, insert the mag just until you feel it stop against the nozzle, and then let go of the mag release. Ideally, the mag should not lock into place unless you apply a bit more pressure to force it against the nozzle. If the mag is locking in too easily, you can either shim the upper surface of the magazine catch to force the mag to sit a bit higher, or place a shim under the gas router to push it up. A reliable indication that you have good seals is if the gun is able to keep cycling until it completely runs out of gas. If it starts getting sluggish and then suddenly vents all its remaining gas, that means it isn't perfectly sealing. The next modification is to reduce the amount of energy needed to cycle, which will improve efficiency at all temperatures. A weaker hammer, or strike, or spring will allow the gun to cycle at lower pressure and can significantly reduce the amount of gas used. For many brands, you can find a replacement marketed as a winter spring or soft spring, or you may be able to bend or otherwise modify a stock spring yourself to apply less tension. However, there is some nuance here. Reducing the tension on the hammer allows the carrier to start moving sooner, meaning it reaches the gas cutoff point sooner, builds up less pressure inside the carrier, and ultimately develops less momentum. Essentially, by reducing the hammer spring strength, we're reducing the amount of energy imparted to the carrier with each shot. What this means is that if the recoil spring is too strong, the carrier may actually not receive enough energy to fully cycle. So, even if the gun is technically more efficient, if it isn't cycling far enough to actually feed and reset, that's not very useful. So, the solution is to also use a weaker recoil spring. This will reduce the cyclic rate of the gun, but the combination of a weaker hammer spring plus weaker recoil spring will substantially boost efficiency. Similarly, if your gun seems to cycle fine in the cold but isn't picking up BBs, that means the recoil spring is too heavy for the current input pressure and should be replaced with a weaker one. And lastly on this topic, the fact that blowback guns rely on momentum to fully cycle is why we do not recommend permanent alterations like Swiss cheese in your bolt carrier to reduce mass. In some cases, reducing the mass of the bolt carrier group will improve efficiency, but the difference is generally not great, while in other cases the loss of momentum may compromise the gun's ability to reliably cycle. So it may require some trial and error to find a specific combination of mass and spring strength that works well. Now all the tweaks we've covered so far are intended to improve efficiency with propane or green gas in cold weather, but stronger propellants can also be used to provide greater pressure. If you're in the US, propylene is commonly sold as MAP Pro, and this generally behaves like propane would at around 20 Fahrenheit warmer. 
These cans accept standard propane fill adapters, and standard gas magazines will work fine. Just be aware that propylene has particularly unpleasant odorant additives, so probably best to only use it outdoors. In the world of airsoft mystery meat gases, we also have red gas and black gas. While their compositions are typically not publicly disclosed, these are intended to provide greater pressure than standard green gas, better known as propane. Different brands will produce different behavior, so without any standardization, we can't give specific recommendations beyond trying it out and seeing what works for you. Which brings us to CO2, probably the most common recommendation we see for use in cold weather. CO2 does have enormously high pressure and good power density, and will cycle well even at low temperatures. However, CO2 does have a couple of significant limitations. First, it typically requires different magazines, which adds expense. Second, CO2 actually experiences significant cooldown, which causes muzzle velocity to drop significantly over the course of a magazine. Third, it does chrono significantly lower the colder it gets, more so than other gases, and it generally imparts more wear and tear on the gun. For these reasons, I personally don't use CO2 much in winter and prefer to stick to propylene in my existing magazines. But there is another way, HPA. Pressurized air neatly sidesteps the temperature-induced vapor pressure loss of liquefied refrigerants and will deliver consistent power regardless of how cold it is. The big caveat here is that it typically requires converting magazines to accept an HPA line, which again adds expense and also the general inconvenience of then being tethered to an airline. And particularly for guns with low capacity, having to disconnect and reconnect lines slows down the process of reloading. If you have an HPA setup already, then something like an HPA tap drum or high cap isn't a bad investment for winter use. But if you don't have an HPA setup already, we would strongly suggest trying out other winterization mods before making that rather expensive investment. Or, you can avoid the need for alternative propellants by keeping magazines warm to begin with. Now, any magazine that you keep on your person will stay warmer than ambient temperature, but hand warmer packs last several hours and can be attached to magazines with a bit of tape, and those provide even more heat. There are also magazine pouches and magazine pouch inserts that provide heating, but we cannot vouch for the effectiveness of those systems. There are two final practical aspects to cover. First, be aware that if your magazines are warmer than your gas tank, they won't fill, so if you opt to use hand warmers for your mags, put one or two on the tank as well. Even if you're not using hand warmers, mags kept close to your body will stay warmer than a gas can left in a staging area, so we recommend also keeping the tank on your person or otherwise finding a way to keep it warm. Worst case, you can purge a mag to chill it, then fill from the empty tank, then put it in a pocket to warm back up. Second, low input pressure will typically also result in reduced muzzle velocity. Different combinations of propellants and guns will behave differently, but it may be necessary to use a higher power nozzle or adjustable valve to maintain FPS. That said, FPS does not make nearly as much of an impact on performance as airsofters tend to think, something we plan to cover in a future video, so as long as you're at or above one joule, we suggest not worrying about it. So to summarize, if you find your gas blowback gun of choice is struggling in cold weather, we recommend going through the following sequence. First, check your seals and replace or shim parts as needed. This is the cheapest modification and has the most impact. Second, try stronger propellant gas, be it propylene, red gas, or black gas. This doesn't require any modification to the gun. Third, get a winter hammer spring if one is available for your gun, and a lighter recoil spring too if available. Most guns can be made to work well at or below freezing with some combination of the above. For example, we've run stock GHKs as low as 15 Fahrenheit, just making sure the seals are good and using propylene to provide a bit higher power. If those conservative measures don't cut it, then you can consider hand warmers, CO2, or HPA. One way or another, if you want to play airsoft, there are ways to make most gas replicas work. But if you just want to buy a gun that works in the cold with no fuss, definitely consider Tokyo Marui, as their guns being designed for low pressure gases means they're set up for winter use right out of the box. And lastly, let's show a practical example of the tips we've given in action. Alright, so we have a GHK mag filled with propylene and loaded to 30 rounds. It's been sitting in an ice bath in the refrigerator. You can see it's just above freezing at the moment. The rifle we're going to use is a Vipertec M16A1 that's had the modifications described earlier in this video. So, uh, light hammer spring, light buffer spring, and let's see what it does.
a little bit of slowdown towards the end, but it still managed to clear the whole thing. Well, that's all for today, so we hope you find this useful, and as always, thanks for watching.